Hi, welcome to the podcast. I'm Steve Kofsky. I'm editorial director for BlackBerry. Joining me today, a couple of colleagues, Alex Willis, Vice President, Global Sales Engineering, and Baldeep Dagra, Bal is Senior Director of Solutions Marketing. And we're here to talk about challenges for rolling out mobility and securing mobile devices in the workplace. Well, that, that kind of brings us around to uh, cooperation is that that final pillar. And, and you mentioned, you know, supply chain. Uh, we, we've got to we've got to uh, uh, collaborate uh, and and look holistically at our businesses. I, I think some of the things that Alex has described are the reasons why uh, BlackBerry's customers for UEM tend to be organizations that really care about uh, safety and certifications, and you know that that really take regulation seriously. They tend to be branches of government. They tend to be branches of the military. They tend to be uh, large banks and financial institutions. That's changing a little bit. Uh, Bala, you've been looking at, at some other trends that are affecting kind of the marketplace. And do you see this, this uh, interest in almost preoccupation with securing mobile devices? Is it moving down? Is it spreading out to other <laughs> verticals? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. We're looking at, I mean, Alex mentioned supply chain. There's a lot of um, uh, emphasis right now on older legacy environments and also those environments that have that are OT based, right? Operational technology. There's a great, uh, there's an industry 4.0 uh, uh, trend um, around um, this kind of convergence of IT and OT. And when you think about OT um, systems themselves, which tend to be based on ICS and SCADA, um, you know, uh, industrial control systems, you know, they, 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 they're their own beasts. They're like robotics and, and that kind of stuff, but they have uh, connections or they're connected to IT based HMIs somewhere in the middle um, that are typically legacy, right? They're old, they're on older operating systems. A lot of them are, are, um, um, isolated as well and you know, it goes back to what we were speaking earlier on around uh, you know um, okay, who's responsible for that and how do we actually start you know thinking about cloud and on-prem and how do we kind of build uh, build something around that for our customers so that's really key for us to understand and help our customers uh, understand that too and for us from a you know corporate corporate cooperation perspective uh, we need to think about who's responsible security you've got your endpoint management teams how do we get them talking to each other but also we don't want to leave the users out right so the users the productivity their experience is critical um, so we need to get those teams who are responsible for for end user experience get them involved as well and that kind of provides the overall uh, customer experience that we want to uh, that we want to help our customers with uh, with uh, achieving their outcomes. Industry standards is, I think, a, a big area for collaboration as, as well. You know, you know, us large uh, providers, right? Like we have to get together, and you know, we're a member of all of the the big programs. I don't have the list off the top of my head, but in creating these standards, and that's going to be really useful for, or that has already been really useful for things like supply chain, like. If, how do you know that you can trust that partner? Like, do you really have to go do a security assessment of them? Like, how do, how do they get a rating or a, you know, that, that's an area that we work into. Insurance is a, one example of that where, you know, insurance companies can, um, you know, provide like a kind of grade, you know, that if I'm going to work with a, a supplier, I want to understand their level of security before I allow them to have connectivity. Um, but still the, the new, the modern way to do that is zero trust. Like you still shouldn't give, you know, a site to site VPN capability to a partner, um, you know, without having done a, a security assessment, but even then it's not enough because you would have to do continuous audits and things like that, you know, with zero trust it, that, that gives you a much safer, um, connectivity point where you, you know, everything, everything is, 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 is prevented or blocked. Um, unless it's a just in time need and an, an actual you know need based on ACLs and what they actually need access to, which is another big difference between things like VPN and something like our, our ZTNA product called BlackBerry Gateway or Silence Gateway, where yeah I'm I'm replacing an older type um, 
protocol around VPN to provide connectivity, um, it's a lot easier for users because there's no uh, kind of lag time and, and connectivity and, and that sort of thing. All of my con contextual, I guess, security posture is assessed before I'm given access. But even once I'm given access to, we'll call it the front door to get behind the firewall, um, I then only have access to the endpoints that I need. Right? This is a really good, you know, kind of partner or provider solution because um, if I can limit once they get into my network what they what they can access, that's a much better security policy than just giving them VPN access and then depending on the backend servers to do authentication and, and protection and that kind of thing. I'd rather just limit where they can possibly go to either you know it can be IP based like network segmentation through VLANs, um, but even down to the protocol level. So some of the some of the bad actors are now are kind of uh, hijacking other ports. Like a, a standard allowed port on a firewall is DNS, like port fifty three for DNS. So you say, all right, I'm going to allow anybody to connect on fifty three. And so what some of the bad actors are doing is they're they're changing the protocol that they use in connecting to their C two servers is just port fifty three. So to a firewall, it might look like any other VPN traffic, I mean, uh, DNS traffic, so it'll just allow it through. Um, what you get with ZTNA and Silence Gateway is it'll actually examine the traffic to make sure that it's actually um, that type of traffic that you're allowing for that, that purpose. Um, but again, so that's another, um, I, I think, thing to look at around the supply chain and, and providing you know partner access into your environment. Um, but just to get back into the collaboration point of it, yeah, I, th I think the big companies like us, we have to get together and we do um, to provide input and guidance and um, to inform these these policies that make it better for all customers to um, to, to work with. Um, and so we do quite a bit of that. And then there's the other collaboration that, like, that we both mentioned is getting the teams in inside of these organizations to work to work together. Um, and it's one of the kind of cool aspects of our job is we get to kind of be that intermediary, especially because we provide, this is something that differentiates us in the market is we provide services to both. Like we've got the cyber and, you know, all of the endpoint protection, then we've got all of the, the, the UEM. So we work with the mobility team. So we're already interfacing with both, both teams. So, um, we've been able to deliver things to both sides that in, in effect, you know, ends up bringing them together. Like the, the, the security posture of mobile devices reporting that into the, you know, into our console that the security team has access to, right? So it's the first time that we've seen that where instead of security just setting up policies and just having the mobility team and IT team implement and just hope it's okay, we can actually do that, but then provide functionality and, and reportability back into the SOC and, and the security team that, that in effect brings them together already. So. It's really cool stuff. Yeah. So think of BlackBerry not just as your as your uh, uh, security and technology provider, but also a peace broker within your organization. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wouldn't say they need a peace broker, in. but but yes, yes, it's uh, you know yeah, big companies. You end up with you know accountability and 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 fiefdoms. You know, this is my area. That's your area. You stay over there. I'll do my area. That kind of thing. But. They, they really depend on each other a lot. And so, you know, if there's a, you know, if, there, if there's a need, um, then we're certainly in a good position to, to help them through that. Yeah. Okay. Finally, uh, l let's talk about some next steps. So if somebody's uh, uh, listened to this podcast and they're, they're now interested, they're curious, how protected are they? Do they, are some of these gaps occurring maybe in their organization? Should they be concerned? Um, where should they turn to get some more information and guidance on this? I mean, if they're already connected with us, you know, I, I think the first thing to do is um, like do a, do a security assessment or like a design discussion, you know, kind of understanding, you know, a typical engagement with us through either your, your sales team or go to blackberry.com. You can um, find contacts there. Another area of really good information and understanding what we do and, and how we help our customers is go to the Blackberry um, Summit, um, the security summit. You know, website, and you can look at some of the sessions that we that we've done, and some of the, the things that we offer. Um, but the the kind of first type of engagement, I think that, that you get the best results from. Like, hey, let's just have a discussion, and we, and we can kind of understand, you know, where you put your current assessment at now in terms of security. Um, what are your plans for the future? And and I mean both from a security posture standpoint, but also from 
you know, just kind of company goals. Like, what do you do? How do your people work? What are the challenges that they have? What could be better if we could um, mobilize that? That's kind of on the mobility side. And then we can have some discussions on how to do that in a really secure way. Um, and then on the cyber side, of course, you know, implementing zero trust and, you know, again, you know, moving people to permanent work from home or, or work from anywhere standpoint. Um, you know, I, so it, we just need to start with a discussion on, you know, well, what are you trying to do um, both from a technology standpoint and from a company strategy standpoint and see where we might be able to offer some assistance to make it easier, you know, get a, a, a better uh, return on investment at a lower total cost of ownership. And, and uh, Bell, any other takeaways, final words? Yeah, I, you know what, well, Alex is completely correct. And if I was to underline what Alex just said, I would say to to those listening and watching, um, be better prepared, right? And you mentioned earlier on about Victor Zora's uh, approach for people, process technology, and how he's kind of looped in cooperation. And that's kind of, uh, you know, to me, that's about binding all of that together, right? And if you could also say collaboration. Uh, and my take for that is along our narrative of being able to prepare, prevent, um, detect, uh, detect and respond to threats out there. And you can do that with the collaboration of, of the various teams involved and, you know, work with us. Like Alex said, let's get let's get some discovery sessions. Let's understand your outcomes. Let's understand your goals, um, because outcomes is what we're all about. Right. Um, we are there to help uh, our customers achieve their goals. And, um, you know, if there's any key takeaway from this, it's think about security as not being an afterthought. You don't want to keep thinking about adding layers of security. That's not how uh, security is a right and it should be built in to whatever you do. So that's kind of my takeaway. Okay. Well, thank you both so much for spending this time with us and uh, helping us parse some of the the issues that are facing uh, folks that are trying to address uh, potential vulnerabilities or gaps in their mobility management and in their business. Um, I really appreciate your time today. Thanks for having me.